Oh, Jesus. Guess who's back? Back again. Tim, he's back. Hey, what's up, everybody? Tim Castleman here with the Two Drink Tim podcast. So, so great to be back with you. First and foremost, I want to say thanks so much for all the outpouring of support and love about the podcast. We're getting tremendous feedback. I really do appreciate it. Uh, As promised, we have put it up on iTunes, so if you're listening to it on iTunes, that's fantastic. If you're not listening to it on iTunes, uh, you can always check it out on the website, timothycastleman.com, and we're actually going to set up a podcast-specific website so that you can capture all of the podcast at your fingertips. So, Thanks so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. If you are uh, watching it or listening to it, however you're consuming it on iTunes, if you do me a solid, leave me a review. I have no idea what that does, but people tell me in the podcasting community, all seven of us on our little hand radios, right, that, uh, that that's important. So if you like the show, please feel free to leave a review. If you don't, please feel free to go find someone else to listen to for a few minutes during your very busy day. So, as you know, there was no Two Drink Tim podcast last week, and there was a very important reason for that. I was drinking my body weight in alcohol down in Mexico, in Cancun, Mexico. Went down there to a little great place I highly recommend called the Palace Resorts. Um, We stayed at a place called Sun Palace, which was couples only, which meant no more uh, having to worry about kids or crib midgets or anything like that. Had a beautiful beach and had an amazing uh, four restaurants, you know, seaside view, everything like that. Rained on us one day, but they uh, made up for that by bringing champagne to the room. Uh, on them, of course, and uh, we just had a, a tremendous time. So if you're looking for a good couple's way to get away, I, I highly recommend doing that. Uh, it's only about a two and a half hour flight from where we're at, so it makes a, a down and back pretty easy and pretty affordable. little tip on that I'll share with you that I learned while I was down there. If you go to eBay and you type in Palace Resorts, you'll see people there that are selling resort packages like oh hey um you know come stay for a week for like 22 23 2400 bucks whatever it is those people actually bought into a special deal that they don't offer anymore but that special deal allows you to sell the weeks at the same amount that um these people pay so like if I go through a travel agent it's three grand right but if I go through one of these it's like 2200 you pay everything to the resort so it's not like a scam or anything like that these people just get referral credits for doing that so a guy told me that told me we'd save a bunch of money if we did that I have not personally done that I'm recommending for you to try it if it works out great tell me if it doesn't I'm sure I'll see it all over Fox News and be like oops that was a mistake my bad. So, great to be back. Definitely getting back in the swing of things. You know, I had that vacation hangover and the very real hangover of being on vacation because the great thing about Palace Resorts is they're all inclusive. So, you get all the food you want, which is, yeah, you know, hey, good, you yeah, have food, yeah. Then you get all the booze you want. They got like the top shelf stuff. They'll make you practically anything. The only thing they didn't have was energy drinks. Um, but besides that, they had anything and everything you wanted to drink. And I know because I drank anything and everything. And I actually got to hang out with a couple of cool couples and uh, they're in the restaurant business. So those guys, if you don't know, loved freaking party. It's ridiculous. Uh, every day, we just like, go, go. It's like, shot, 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 shot. It's like we were in a rap video or something. Uh, we just proceeded to get uh, pretty toasty every single day, but I'm proud. I, uh, you know, didn't puke once. Wasn't hung over too bad most mornings. So, uh, so I'm pretty happy and pretty proud of the moderation uh, that I showed. Now, I've got a lot of stuff I want to share with you about the importance of going on vacation, especially if you're running your own business and have a team. And that's what I intended to share with you today. However, in my brief time back, some stuff has popped up in my business that I feel has been weighing heavy on my heart. Um, So I want to share it with you in an attempt to kind of give you an inside peek behind the scenes view of of things and and maybe help you out with a problem that personally uh, I've struggled with my entire uh, internet marketing life and I would probably say majority of my adult life. So don't worry, I have those lessons written down from stuff to learn while you go away and I will share that probably on a following podcast. In fact, I'd bet it's the, uh, the one right after this one. But today, I want to talk to you about something um, and basically it's, it's watch your words or watch what you say. And with that, we're going to pause for dramatic effect. Mm. 
By the way, today's podcast is not officially sponsored by El Dorado Rum. It's a 12-year-old rum, which I believe translated into English, uh, translates, El Dorado translates into bums nutsack. Uh, not the greatest rum that I've had, uh, but when you're drinking in the middle of the afternoon recording a podcast, it is what we'll affectionately refer to as good enough. So, a little pop of the cork there. Mmm. Right from the body, like a bottle, like a classy gentleman. And we're going to get underway. So, like I said, you could call this watch your words or, or watch what you want to say. And let me give you some background before we kind of talk about the problem and what I'm working on to come up with a solution. So, in internet marketing, and, you know, I'm only going to speak from the guy side because, you know, best I can tell, despite... Uh, you know, size. I'm not a female. Um, and I, I don't know if the same thing exists there. But in the internet marketing community, guys refer to themselves as, as certain things, right? Like, hey, we're bros. Hey, we're friends. Hey, we're pals, right? And, and we refer to each other, you know, I mean, you get an email, right? And it's like, oh, this is my good friend. This is my best friend. This is my pal. This is my, you know, business uh, partner. This is my whatever. And we, we use these terms so easily in the internet marketing uh, crowd and career industry, whatever fancy keyword. Don't, don't pigeonhole me, Nancy, okay? But we use these things like friends, bros, and we use them all the time to describe other people and what I'm finding out is that that doesn't mean the same thing to me as it does to somebody else, okay? So before I can talk about the specific problem, I want to share with you some stuff that I've recently discovered about myself. Now, this is all done through wonderful therapy, right? Once a week I go, I get my ass handed to me by my therapist. Uh, it's a very uh, emotional experience most of the time, but it helps me kind of learn more about myself. So I'm going to share that with you and be open and honest um, so that maybe you can learn some stuff about yourself. So here's what I've discovered. And I didn't know this, legitimately did not know this until... Let me, let me rephrase that. I didn't consciously, I was not consciously aware of this until probably maybe a month ago, two months ago. And that is this, like I'm a fixer. Okay, part of the reason I think I'm so good at what I do is I love to help and teach others. But for my friends, for family, for, for people that I, I know, um, I'm a fixer. And what I mean is like, you know, you bring me your, your broken, uh, you know, screwed up life and I'll fix it for you, you know, or as I love to commonly say, like you bring me your dumpster fire of a life and I'll put the dumpster fire out and I'll help you. And the reason I do that is one, I enjoy doing it. Okay. I told you I love teaching and it's, it's the greatest uh, thing that I do and I, I'm blessed to be able to do it and I would never want to change it. But the other thing is this, like I get my self worth from fixing problems, Right? It's just like why why in a relationship guys and girls are, you know, she's she just wants to talk, right? Well my day was horrible, my coworker, she's a bitch, and you know, my, my mom this and this happened. And then like as a guy, we're like, All right, problem one, here's how we fix it. Problem two, here's how you fix it. Right? And they get all mad. They're like, I just want you to listen. Like I don't I'm never gonna fix any of this. I'm just gonna talk about it every day for the rest of our lives until one day you just smother me with a pillow, right? So we're fixers as guys, but, but that's because we get the worth, right? It's like, hey, you had a problem, right? You, you know, you got to flatten your tire. You, got, you don't have a flatten your tire anymore. I fixed it. I'm valuable. You see that I'm worthy or worth being around you. And for me, I found out that that's really, really true, that my self-worth comes from helping and fixing things and specifically helping others. As a result of that, I form relationships very quickly and I become very loyal quickly. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge hockey fan. I love hockey. I'm watching the playoffs right now, go Bruins. And uh, I just think, uh, you know, hockey is probably the greatest sport that I've ever had a chance to watch. God knows I'll never, ever be able to participate in it um, for sure. Well, my favorite type of player, believe it or not, hockey, is the enforcer. And for those of you who don't know, there's usually a guy on the majority of the team, he plays about four minutes a game, and at some point during the game, something happens, a star player gets attacked, the goalie gets run, which means they run into him, or the coach wants to send a message, he gets a tap on the shoulder, he goes out on the ice, he goes up against the other guy that got the tap on the shoulder, and they just beat the crap out of each other repeatedly. And they do that for a lot of reasons. I used to think they just 
just in it to fight. But, you know, it's like, hey, you broke this rule or we're standing up for our team or we're sending us a message or whatever the reason is. Well, for me, that's my favorite player because in a way, I see that as my role in a lot of relationships. I mean, I've walked into business meetings where business deals have been done. I remember I worked with this copywriter once. I was working so hard to get their rates up and they were working and stumbling and falling. And then I found out a friend of mine hired them for like a ridiculously low amount of money, like, you know, slave wages and below. And they had already done the deal and everything. And I just I called my buddy up. I said, hey, man, you know, I know you had the deal with Person X here. That's not happening anymore. They're like, well, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. I refuse to let them work for that little, right? And I had no financial interest either way. I wasn't getting a kickback from the copywriter. And I certainly wasn't making my friend happy, but I was standing up for someone because I was loyal, right? And I was defending their honor or who they are. So... That's the background, right? Like I'm a fixture and, 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 you know, I get my self-worth from others. And because of that, I'm loyal to a fault and I get value off of defending and, and helping others. But what the problem has been, and this is something, again, I've just recently become consciously aware of, but it's affected me in my whole internet marketing career, is like I look at the people that I work with as friends more than associates and they look at me as more of an associate than a friend and when we use words like bro and this is my good friend and this is my business partner and this is my you know i love you and all those things like those words mean something to me that apparently at least from my perspective they don't mean to other people and I'm going to share some real world examples and, you know, the people that are pissed about me sharing it, you can just come talk to me and you can, you know, me and you can yell at each other behind closed doors. So when I first got started, one of the, one of the big defining moments or breakout moments for me was um, I got invited uh, to be part of a group called Practical Profits. And at the time it was a, um, it was a bunch of up and comers, uh, a lot of successful people already in there, but I was, I would say I was probably the least su successful financially and definitely the newest right we had guys in there that were already making six figures a year at that time i was still i think i was still working part-time um you know we had guys making half a million dollar a year and i was definitely the low man in the totem pole and i didn't understand why i got invited to the group except that you know i gave a good presentation and people liked me and you know i hustled so so maybe that was it um but part of that group, like, I took that group very seriously. Like, these people were my now my family, and I had to protect them, and I had to help them, and I had to, you know, defend them. And I, you know, I was loyal to them to a fault, um, or, you know, I, I was loyal to them more than most. To where if something would happen and their name would be taken uh, out of context or, or, you know, some hater would attack them, I'd attack the hater for them. And they wouldn't have to tell me. Right? They weren't like tapping me on the shoulder. It was just like, oh, you're not going to attack my buddy Jason. You're not going to attack my buddy John. You're not going to attack this person or that person because of it. And I was doing that because I thought that's what you did for friends. And I thought that's what being loyal meant. It's like, hey, I got your back. You got my back. Like, I'll take a bullet for you. You'll take a bullet for me. You know, we'll get matching Justin Bieber tattoos, whatever that means to you. But what I came to find out was... It's okay to take a bullet for someone as long as they're willing to take a bullet from you. And I came to find out one of the reasons that I was invited to this group, I didn't find out until afterwards, um, was for tax purposes, which I know you're like, huh, that makes no sense. So here's the deal. We all did a couple live events and we did an online event. We sold some stuff. Well, that all needed an account to go through, right? And I stepped up and I was like, hey, yeah, you know, okay, well, I want to be part of this group. I want to help them. They're like, hey, we want you to manage the money. And I'm like, great, manage the money. That's fantastic. I'll do it. I'll show my loyalty. I'll be the best bookkeeper there is. Well, the real reason I got to manage the money was elevant at, or, um, evident at the end of the year when I got the tax bill personally for all of the stuff that happened to that group before we formed an LLC and a partnership and, and all that stuff. And I was like, hey, guys, I, I don't know. Like, this is my first year. I have no idea what I need to do with that. They're like, oh, man, it's fine. It's no big deal. And I ended up having to pay a couple grand in taxes more that year because of the group income, because of the way that it was sent through me and all that stuff. Well, come to find out a year or two later, that was not done. Um, that was not done 
I don't even know the right way to say it. That was done deliberately. I guess that's the best way to say it. And one of the members of the group actually went around to the other members of the group and was like, hey, I've talked to an accountant, and this is what they're saying about the tax thing, so we should give this to somebody that's not aware of that. And that's how my name got thrown into the hat to become the, the financial person. And the reason I know this isn't bullshit is I've actually had two or three people that were in that group tell me the exact identical story without knowing the other two or three had told me. So that was a big wake up call for me. But because of the fact that I get value from friendships and stuff like that, um, it wasn't the wake up call that I needed or it didn't fix the problem. You know, it's like that copywriter I mentioned earlier, right? They are the most frustrating person. At, at time, they've been the most frustrating person in my life, right? It's like they never return calls. They never return texts. You'll be in the middle of a conversation. They disappear. You know, X, Y, Z happens, and it's like, what? what is going on with them? Like, you know, uh, I would never do that to a friend. Why are they doing that to me? But even though they do that to me, I still feel loyal to them to this day to where if someone was to pop up and attack them, I would immediately go and defend their honor, even though that would be one sided. Meaning if the if the reverse was on the other, you know, if the reverse was true and someone was attacking me, they wouldn't defend my honor. By the way, I, I feel like this is a therapy session. I know it's not the normal fun joke, ha ha, that you're used to, but this is really important to share. Uh, one, to get it out of my head, but two, I, I got to feel like I'm not the only one. So if you're looking for funny haha -ha joke, uh, we'll, we'll throw some in here. We'll try to keep it as light as possible, but, but maybe this, this isn't for you. Um, so, okay. So that's the deal, right? Like, so I'm loyal uh, to a fault. I, I get my value in others. And let's talk about that for a second, because that's important. Because again, this is something that I wasn't consciously aware of until a couple months ago. But why do I take my value so seriously in my business and the people I associate with in the business? Well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. So here's, here's how I would best describe it. If you have four boxes, right? You got like business, you got um, friendships, you got like marriage and you got health. Let's just say those are the four boxes. And you had to grade yourself. Like I would say, judging by the way I look, definitely an F in health, right? Like maybe a C minus in marriage and like a D or an F in friendship. But when it comes to business, I give myself an A and A plus. Really probably like a B. Well, here's, here's why this is important to understand. I put all my worth and value for who I am as a person in my business and my business relationships because I suck or think I suck at everything else, right? I suck at friendships. I suck at uh, my marriage. I suck at personal health and responsibility, you know, but man, I'm really good at this thing. And the other thing is my business gives me a lot of what I want. It gives me the, the ability to help people, gives me the ability to quote unquote fix people. And it gives me that dopamine release, right? It's like, oh man, I made some money. I made some money. I made some money. I mean, I, I won't say the exact amount, but I will say this, you know, we made five figures last week while I was on vacation while I was on vacation. I didn't touch a computer once, okay? Um, that's a hell of a rush to come back and see that your PayPal account has jumped by a comma. It's like, wow, that's nice, I like that, okay. All right, sweet, fantastic. Um, so that's just me. So I put all of my value in my business and my business relationship. So when a friend, uh, see I even said it right there, when a business associate says, hey, yeah, we're friends, we're bros, we're part of a mastermind, then I take that very seriously. I'm like, all right, we're gonna, you know, do the blood oath and, you know, cut our cut our palms and get matching tattoos and, you know, maybe kill someone as a gang style initiation. I don't know. Maybe that's what you do with your friends, not what I do with mine, right? We're gonna go to Mexico and meet these two random restaurant tours from Boston and proceed to get hammered all week and then drunkenly make, make plans to see uh, the Bruins next year. That's, you know, whatever your, uh, your daydream is, you live your dream, I'm going to live mine. So because of that, I have to really work on watching what I say and the words that I do. Because again, it's okay to take a bullet for someone, but it's not okay if they wouldn't take the bullet for you. And because people say, oh, like we're friends and I love this, you know, I love this group and I love you guys and we're bros and this and that. I take that seriously when that really doesn't mean anything. In fact, the majority of people are just what I like to call online associates. 
So that's the problem. Let's kind of talk about the solution uh, and, and what I'm, I'm doing to kind of fix that. So the first thing I would say is you got to look at what people are motivated by. A majority of my colleagues are motivated by money, right? And don't get me wrong, money is awesome and money is great. And money provides a lot of things, but that's what I would consider their primary driver. It's like money. It's like, you know, hey, I met this new guy named Adolf Hitler. Um, he seems like a nice guy, doesn't really like the Jews, but has a great program out on Facebook marketing. Sadly, I know a lot of people in the industry be like, ah, you know what? I don't care what he does personally, professionally. Let's just promote him. Let's make money. In fact, I've had I've had business associates tell me like, hey, I know you don't like this guy, but don't let the fact that you can't stand to be in the same room with this guy affect your ability to make money with him. So that tells me that they're primarily money driven where I am not I'm respect and friendship driven you know if someone's like hey that guy right there yeah that guy broke into my house and had sex with my wife and you know kicked my dog and ate my cheese I would be like that guy's dead to me I'd never work with him you know I'll never do anything with that guy again and I would actually mean it because not because they'd done anything personally wrong to me but because they had upset or offended my friend and again, I think that's perfectly fine as long as you understand that it's got to be a two-way street. And for a lot of my business life, and because I put so much into my business, it's a one-way street. You know, I, I make no bones about it. I had a business partnership uh, in 2000. Uh, 10, 11, 12, I don't know, we'll, we'll say 2011 to 2012 that ended disastrously. Not like, you know, I hate the guy and, you know, we're, we got warrants out for each other's arrest and things like that, but I mean, we just lost a ton of money. We were terrible business partners. We should, should have never been business partners in the beginning, um, but, and we're much better off separate, um, but it still affected me deeply. And, you know, I've made no bones about it, you know, to, to friends of like how much of an impact that relationship has had on me. Despite that, right, a lot of those uh, same people still choose to work with my ex-business partner, which is, you know, their choice. What I'm saying is I'm not saying people shouldn't work with them or anything like that. What I'm saying is I would never do that, right? If someone, was, if someone told me, hey, you know what, things didn't go so well here and, you know, here's the downfall and, you know, we got some integrity issues maybe and this and that, I would be like, that person's done. I'm not working with them, not because they'd done anything to me, but because they had hurt my friend or they had, you know, impacted my friend negatively, and I'm finding out that that's just not the case with a lot of people. So the first thing is, uh, obviously, you know, first thing is become aware of it. If this sounds like you, if you're like, oh, damn, right? Like maybe you should go talk to somebody or maybe you just kind of have to be um, aware of it and, and kind of understand what, what needs to happen. Okay. So first thing is awareness. Second thing is, you know, dis discovering their primary motivator. It also matters their business model. One of my friends, he's an affiliate marketer. The guy doesn't produce his own product or rarely produces his own product, right? So he needs stuff to mail all the time. So because of his business model, he has to find people to promote and he's not out there going, Hey Tim, look, um, you know, how can I screw over Tim Castleman? It's like, hey, man, I got a mail to make money. So this offer converts, you know, I don't care who it's out by. We're just going to go ahead and promote it. Not because I like the guy, not because we're BFFs forever or, you know, I don't like the guy. It's like, I don't care what that guy does personally. We're going to make money, money over everything, which is probably, you know, the title of a million rap songs. So that's step two, kind of understand their motivation. Step three is well, I, I return everybody to zero. That's the best way. Like I, I look at all of my business relationships now and everyone gets brought up. I don't care what level we were at before. Everyone got, gets brought up to the starting line again. And it's like, all right, now that I know how this race needs to be run, we're going to put everybody at the starting line again and see what that means and how far that goes. You know, because if I honestly think about it, I've been online full time since 2009 and I've sucked my heart and soul and well-being into this business. You know, I spent the last two years, you know, with the year one, taking it out of a nosedive and then year two, making it grow. Um, but even that, even though I've worked with probably literally hundreds of people and promoted hundreds of people and stuff like that, I would say I could count the number of true friends, okay, 
on one hand in this business, okay? And by true friends, I mean people that, like, I would go on vacation with. Like, one guy I know uh, invited me to his wedding, and I went. I was honored. The other guy I know, uh, we actually vacationed. Our, our families did. Um, we had a great time together. Another guy I know is, you know, someone I talk to on a regular basis. And, uh, I, you know, those are the people that I respect and admire the most. And let me be also clear here. You know, I'm not saying every person you work with has to be your BFF or like an amazing friend, okay? What I'm saying is if you're like me and you put a lot of value on relationships, you need to understand that when people say things like, oh, he's my brother, he's my friend, he's my, you know, good buddy, well, whatever, you know, 99% of the time it's bullshit. They don't mean that. And again, it's great to be loyal and you should find a group of people that you can be loyal to and that you feel loyal to, but that loyalty only goes as far as their loyalty to you goes. You know, if you can't depend on them to return a phone call, and by the way, that's a little, a little test, a little thing as I was thinking over, that's a great test. If you're like, I don't know where I stand with this person, call them. If you always get a text back or you always get ignored, then guess what? You're not a friend. Okay, because friends don't do that. The other thing is if you're in the same circle, because a lot of us are, you know, you're like, yeah, man, you know, just hypothetical names here. You know, like, hey, I haven't talked to this guy, you know, in a while. I haven't talked to, you know, John, haven't talked to him. And they're like, really, man, I talk to John every week. Yeah, we get together and, you know, he invited me to his kid's bar mitzvah. And he, you know, he did, ex you know, he sent my wife flowers for Mother's Day or whatever it is. That's a pretty good indication that you're on the outside looking in instead of on the inside looking out. Okay, so understand, be aware, understand their primary motivator, set everybody to zero again. And then, you know, the people that will, are your friends are your actual friends will come out uh, in the end, in the wash. Okay. Um, the other thing you need to do, and this is something I'm, I'm saying as much for myself as you is you got to have a life outside of work like this. This job and this business is amazing. And I have met some truly amazing and awesome people. What I need to do is make more amazing, awesome friends outside of my business and outside of this community. That way, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, the best way I describe it is it's kind of like if you have a house, right? You got one house and that house is making you money. Well, something happens to that house, that, that money goes away. Well, if you have 10 houses, two or three of those houses could not be making you money, but the rest could be. And that's the same thing with friends. If you've got three or four friends and they're all in the same industry and they're all in the same business and they lead the same life, that's great. But when something happens or something goes wrong or, you know, something changes, well, you've lost a majority of your contacts or information. So for me and for anyone listening, it's important to have friends outside of it, you know, uh, and I've been very fortunate enough that I can make friends easily. I, I don't have a solution for you. I, I tell a lot of dick jokes, I guess. Um, and I also will say I'm not an easy friend to keep. I can't, you know, I can't tell you the number of times I've, I've hung out with guys and they're like, dude, you're amazing and awesome and hilarious. But my wife says if, you know, I want to keep having sex once a quarter with her that, you know, we can't be friends because, you know, you swear like a sailor and you have a podcast called the Two Drink Tim podcast, right? Um, so it's important to have friends outside of your primary work. And it also will give you some balance. It's like, I, I will fully admit, I, I am friends with two or three people since college that I've met. Um, and keeping long-term sustainable relationships is tough for me. Uh, I don't know why. It's like, it's not tough if they're the initiator, but if I'm the one that has to call, it's like, oh man, well, I guess that's not going to happen. Um, and again, a lot of that relates to, you know, I'm a failure in a lot of areas or feel like I'm a failure, but in my business, I'm successful. So I want to keep hitting the button and getting that dopamine release. And the last little thing, it's going to sound funny, um, but I'll tell you in advance it works. And I'll tell you because I did it myself. Uh, after a string of horrible dates after my first marriage, uh, I actually sat down one night and I pulled out a three by five card and I just wrote down, I was like, all right, I got to write down like the the qualities I want in a, in a girlfriend. So I was like, okay, I mean, I was explicit. I was like, Hey, you know, got to have this color hair, you know, this size cheat cheese, you know, I mean, I was, I wasn't like drawing the perfect human being, but I at least wrote down a fair assessment of it. And I threw it in a, a desk somewhere and I never saw it again until my wedding day. And I was searching for something and I pulled this thing out. Um, and this is the three by five card. And while it didn't match exactly to my wife, 
um, it matched 95% of the things that I wanted. The thing is this, once you set out like, hey, this is the type of person I want to be friends with or I want to have a relationship with, your body unconsciously goes out to kind of seek that answer. I truly believe that because I've seen it happen to me. So sit down and write like qualities that you want in a friend. And I know that sounds weird. And, you know, as I'm, as I'm even saying this, I'm like, okay, one, I need another drink. Two, like, I know this is like a little airy, fairy, hocus pocus, whatever. But I really think that this can save you a lot of pain and agony because this, this right here, has destroyed more business relationships for me than anything else I've done. Because I thought we were friends, that person pulled away or I perceived that they pulled away. So then I was like, we're not gonna be friends anymore. Well, I'm not gonna be uncertain, so I'll just torpedo the relationship because I don't wanna get hurt by that person anymore. And as a result of that, we're no longer friends. And why weren't they as good of a friend as I was? And why didn't they take a bullet for me like I wanted to take for them? And so on and so forth. So while I understand this isn't like a, here's how to make a million dollars today or a, a huge you know, component of business, I will say this is everything about business because relationships are one of the most critical things you can build and invest in throughout your entire life. So I would actually sit down and be like, hey, this is the type of person I want, you know, and it's OK to be as specific as you want. Like, you know, I may get to the point where I'm like, hey, these type of people that I want to associate with don't work with those type of people. And then I have to make uh, the understanding of doing that is I got to understand that one day a push may come to shove and I may have to say, hey, I think you're a great person, but we're not friends because you decided to do X, Y, Z and I don't support that. And again, just kind of in, in a quick recap and, and wrap up here, you know, I'm not saying you have to be BFFs with everybody. It's okay to have different people at different levels. Hey, this guy's just an, a business associate. This guy's a, a true friend. This guy and me, you know, we have matching tattoos or this guy, I don't even know. I'm just going to mail for his offer. I'm not saying you have to vet and you have to, to work on that. What I'm saying is watch yourself and watch what you believe about other people and your relationship with them. Not because they are ill will, not because uh, of their ill intentions, but because you may have a perception of a bigger relationship than there really actually is. And that's why I think you really need to watch your words and you need to be clear about what, you know, who you are, how you find value in yourself, you know, and you need to take the steps necessary to change it if you don't like what you see. Surround yourself with better people, right? Understand their motivations for the relationship going into it. Because let's face it, everybody wants something out of the other person. You're with your spouse because you want something. You're like, hey, she touched my little way, and maybe she'll do that again, right? My birthday's coming up in, you know, five months. Maybe, just maybe, she'll let me be naked for a few minutes. Um, you have to find out what that is that that person wants from you, and more importantly, what, or just as importantly, what you want for them. And if you don't know, sit down, write a list of things that you want in friendships and go out and actively cultivate and work on it. And always be trying to find people because the people that help get me to where I am today will not be the people that help me get to the place that I want to be. Some of them will be along for the journey, but a majority of them will not because things change, situations change, life changes. So there you have it. There is this week's episode of the Two Drink Tim podcast. Again, uh, I know that this wasn't the fancy uh, ha-ha barrel of laughs that it normally is, but I wanted to share it with you because I truly believe it's one of the most important things that you could do for yourself is to understand this going in and also take a hard look at yourself and your relationships and maybe see that that loyalty that you thought was once there really truly isn't and adjust accordingly. So with that, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Again, I'll ask one more time if you'd be so kind as to leave a review for the Two Drink Tim podcast on iTunes. I would be indebted to you. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a fun contest or a prize coming up. I can't wait to hang out with you again next week. I will be talking about why you need to take vacations and what you can learn while you're away. And I'll be sharing with you a secret track from one of my favorite bands of 2014. So until then, talk to you soon. See you.